of grace. And if, if I want a relationship with him, then I need to forgive because if I'm unwilling to forgive, guess what's in my heart? Hate, anger, bitterness, vengeance. If that's your heart, you surely can't have a relationship with almighty, holy, perfect, love and forgiving God. That's why we need to learn to forgive. And when I think about the idea of forgiveness, one of the things that I see time and time again is forgiveness impacts every aspect of our lives. It impacts your relationships. What would happen if there was no forgiveness in marriage? <laughs> Some of you are laughing. <laughs> but seriously, is there a perfect wife other than mine? <laughs> uh, no, seriously. If, is there a perfect husband? No. The only way that a marriage can exist and be restored and, and to pro be preserved is forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes trust will be broken. Hurt feelings will be hurt. Words will be said. Or what about your relationship with your children? Your kids are sometimes going to disobey you. Or sometimes your parents, who are not perfect, are going to wrong you. Not necessarily because they intend to, but sometimes they just do. Just because they're human. What if there was no forgiveness in a parent-child relationship? Or what about in the church? We call each other brother and sister in Christ, and that's exactly what we are. But what if there was no forgiveness? One of the things that we learn throughout Scripture is unity is one of the most important things in the church. And in fact, God seeks it out very much so. Jesus prayed for it at the end of his life. The first problem that Paul addresses in the Corinthian letter is about division. And realize this, if, there is, if you are unwilling to forgive, you're promoting division in the church. That's serious. That, I think that's one of the reasons why God emphasizes time and time again, you forgive. And in fact, even in the Corinthian letter, Paul says, guess what? There should be no lawsuits among you. You know what? There should be no lawsuits. Why, why are you going and complaining against one another? And in fact, one of my wife's favorite verses that she reminds me and it helps me to forget is the verse where Paul is mentioning the Corinthian letter where he says, isn't it better to be wronged? Isn't it better to be cheated? It's like, you know what? It's better to forgive and have unity and love and be willing to let them cheat me. You know, I've been wronged by Christians. Now, I can be angry and hate them, but that's not Christ-like. And honestly, I would rather have a relationship with those who wronged me in the church or in my family or outside of the church or whatever it may be than just hold on to that anger and be bitter. Because bitterness really is a disease that spreads. It ruins your life. It ruins your choices. It ruins your relationships. It affects your whole worldview on everything. And it spreads. And when you're bitter, does it... Do you usually contain it in yourself or does it usually go on to other people? Have you noticed how bitter parents often create bitter kids? Bitter Christians often make other bitter Christians? This is one of the reasons why we need to start listening to the word of God. I mean, look at how the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus is teaching this powerful sermon about kingdom living. He says, if you are going to proclaim me as the Lord of your life, if you're going to live in my kingdom, this is how I want you to live. And he teaches the principles. Do you want, and he teaches them, guess what? If someone strikes you on the cheek, what are you supposed to do? Turn to him the other. If someone takes your article of clothing, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> Give him some more. If someone forces you to go one mile, what should you do? Go two. Two. And that's beneficial for your emotional state and for your health. So one of the things that we understand here is that Christ constantly teaches us, forgive, be willing to be wrong. Do you want to know why we're so unwilling to, un be unwilling to forgive? So much of it is because we're angry, we're hurtful, we're bitter, we're vengeful, all the attributes we shouldn't have. But a lot of it's pride. A lot of it is pride. Have you ever had that mentality that says, I can't believe he wronged me? Well, who are you? Have you ever wronged anyone? Because once you have wronged someone, you really shouldn't be able to use that excuse. Or someone will say, you know what, they dis disrespect me. 
No one disrespects me. That's pride. Guess what? Jesus was willing to forgive despite being perfect in the Son of God. And here's the thing. If anyone had a right to have a sense of pride and say, no one disrespects me. No one talks to me that way. Who would it have been? Jesus Christ. And if the Savior teaches us that lesson, how much more so should we? One of the things that I'm trying to emphasize to you is the power and the greatness of forgiveness. I mean, do we praise God mainly because of His wrath or because of His grace? Because of His grace. I mean, we're thankful that God is a just God, but at the same time, we're thankful that God does not give us what we deserve. We're thankful for the forgiveness of sin. And in fact, when we think about the standard in which we are to forgive, the scriptures really teach us we are to forgive as God is forgiven and as Christ is forgiven. I want to read two passages of scripture because he sets the tone here. He sets the standard and he teaches us how to forgive. One of the passages is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 through 32. And Paul writes this. He says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Colossians chapter 3, verse 13 says, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. So we see here one of the two commands. Is forgiveness optional for the Christian? No. Okay, that's very clear. But one of the things that he sets the tone is, he sets the standard. He says, as God and as Christ forgive, this is how much you are to forgive. And one of the things that I love about this Ephesian passage is it really teaches us how to forgive. Because one of the things people ask is say, okay, Micah, I know I'm supposed to forgive. I want to forgive. I want to be set free. How do I do it? Well, one of the things that we learn here is from Ephesians is we need to start getting rid of the th ways of thinking that promote unforgiveness. Bitterness. As long as you're bitter, you're not going to forgive. Rage and anger. As long as you have those, you're not going to forgive. Brawling. Slander. Every form of malice. I mean, if you're talking bad about people, oftentimes that kind of confirms how much you don't like them. If I'm slandering someone, let's say Willie hurt my feelings, and I go around and I slander Willie to everyone, and I'm repeating that message over and over and over again, guess all what I'm doing? All I'm doing is laying on fertilizer for my reason never to forgive him. I forgive you, Willie. <laughs> no, <laughs> Willie's great. Um, but what about bitterness, rage, and anger? I can tell you, this is one of the reasons why people do not grow spiritually. It's because they're angry and bitter and rageful and they're malicious. But I can tell you, for me personally, for my own walk with Christ, one of the best things I've ever done to grow spiritually is learn to forgive. Yeah, people have wronged me. I was angry all the time. I dwelt on all the injustices in my life. But I can tell you, once I started forgiving, I started valuing the people who wronged me. It started having pity on them. And I think that's one of the reasons, one of the things I learned about Christ is when you start forgiving, you start pitying them instead of hating them. That's one of the reasons why in Colossians where it says, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you have against one another. Forgive us, the Lord forgave you. And then in that Ephesians passage as well, he says, be kind and compassionate to one another. Remember how a few weeks ago when I was teaching about kindness, I said, and, and teaching about love, I thought, why would, in the definition of love, have this mentioning of kindness? Because in kindness, that's where we show people we value them. When we're rude to people, we're, we're really saying, you know, I don't value you at all. But when we're kind to people, we value them. We show, you know, I care about you. And so instead of having this bitterness and rage and anger and brawling slander and malice, we are to have kindness. Say, you know, I value you. I value you as much as I value myself. And instead of holding up my right of being angry because you have wronged me, I'm going to hold up my right to forgive. And then it says being compassionate. One of the things that I often do after I take a step back, because sometimes I'll get hurt and angry and then...